incredible journey of understanding and discovery that will lead you to your highest self. The Buddha in your mirror is read by Dan Warren. The Buddha in your mirror. Practical Buddhism. Thank you, baby. Search for self. Nice part. No butter notes. A foreword by Herbie Hancock. Why have you, no matter what your realm of life, picked up this book, even for a moment? Wouldn't you agree that no matter where we're at, we can always be at least a little happier? And while we may be feeling pretty good today, sometimes without warning or explanation, we just end up in a funk. Even those of us who may appear to have been blessed in this life have our periods when the good things around us still don't allow us to live with joy. There has to be something more, something deeper. But even when by all appearances things are going well, we often don't recognize that we are experiencing problems. When I think about the many contemporaries and friends in my profession who have come and gone, the legends who have passed from this life too soon, whose musical voices were silenced through losing the battle of illness or drugs, the need for a method to acquire lasting happiness... Alexa, turn up volume. The realities of the jazz life, and I'm sure it's the same for many occupations, are not easy. It takes a lot of strength, physical and spiritual, to tour constantly, sometimes traveling to a new country every day for months on end, to continue to tap one's creativity, to maintain healthy relationships. In the midst of life's stark reality, on both the professional and personal levels, it has been the profound yet easy to grasp life-affirming philosophy of Nietzsche and Buddhism that has sustained me for some 29 years. But let's back it up a bit. I wasn't born into a rich family. In fact, we were quite poor. But I was fortunate in that we always had food on the table. Even more important, I had the support of parents who encouraged me to live my dreams. And they supported those dreams to the best of their ability. Though they couldn't afford to send me to college, they did anyway, somehow. Along with the support of my parents, my life has largely been guided by various mentors I've had the fortune to encounter along the journey to today. Three of them especially stand out. The first was the second piano teacher I ever had, Mrs. Jordan. Way back before jazz was a part of my consciousness, I was a nine-year-old boy with two years of piano study under my belt. This was in Chicago, 1949. I can't remember now how I was introduced to Mrs. Jordan, but to this day, I can't forget what she taught me. After hearing me play a bit, she said that yes, it was clear I could read music. But at that very first meeting, she asked me if I was familiar with things like touch, nuance, phrasing, and even how to breathe when I sat at the keyboard, concepts that were alien to my experience. When I said no, she said, I'll show you and she sat down and played a piece by Chopin that was so gorgeous my nine-year-old jaw dropped. Mrs. Jordan taught me that playing the piano was so much more than just knowing the notes. Watching her play with such warmth, such dignity, and such passion, I was able, without realizing it, to pick up the idea that the piano was an instrument for self-expression. Through her honesty and continual efforts to find the means to explain to a young boy that which might otherwise remain ungraspable, Mrs. Jordan fired my desire to learn. And as a testament to her teaching abilities, in just about a year and a half, I won a major Chicago piano competition and got to play a concerto with the Chicago Symphony at Orchestra Hall. Studying with Mrs. Jordan was the first time I remember seeing a new dimension in something seemingly familiar and the impact of that has stayed with me all this time. In fact, I think that's what great mentors do. They excite within you a capacity to look at something in a new way, a way that resonates particularly within you. What I also got from Mrs. Jordan, without realizing it at the time, was a sense of how one person's sincerity could have a permanent impact on another. Miles Davis was that kind of mentor too. He was a singular character who was so fully the master of his instrument and his music that he solidly did things the way he felt they ought to be. Miles took a lot of flack for turning his back on audiences in performance. But those of us in his band 
saw clearly that he did that in order to direct us in subtle ways. A head shake here, a slight gesture with his horn there, as he continued his own virtuosic playing. Miles just forged ahead and never felt the need to explain himself. Those of us who worked with and for Miles got a taste of his particular genius, which went beyond his playing. What was really special was his ability to draw all of us into the process and completely integrate whatever we brought to the table. He told us that he was paying us to do our practicing right there on the bandstand, that he was hiring us to create, to contribute something. And on stage or in the studio, he proved repeatedly that whatever we came up with, he could seize it and make something happen. Awesome. On many occasions, he saved our butts with this ability, mm. turning our outright mistakes into musical themes he would instantly incorporate into whatever we were cooking. And when we got stuck, he had the knack for getting us out of it, in his own peculiar way. Once, when I faced the musician's equivalent of writer's block, Miles leaned over and mumbled in my ear, Put a B in the bass. A bit puzzled, I tried to work in what I thought he was talking about. Alexa, turn up volume. A spark started to happen, which fed him, which in turn fed me, leading to a musical dialogue. Another time, when I was in a rut, he dropped this on me. Don't play the butter notes. That sent my mind reeling. Finally, I assumed he was telling me to somehow avoid the obvious. I'm not even sure to this day if Miles really knew what he meant. But I took it to mean, remove the thirds and sevenths from the chords I was playing. Without getting too technical musically, let's just say this opened up the sound so that whomever I would be improvising with could make much more of a contribution to exploring the possibility of a melody. Amen. Whatever Miles had in mind, the guidance worked. We caught fire. Mm. To me, that's an example of greatness and leadership. Amen. Instead of dictating, he stimulated me to find the solution within myself the whole time supporting me with the full confidence that he could harmonize with all of us and get us to create harmony together.